Hello, ladies, and welcome back to Real Life Conversations. I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen, and I am so excited. You know why, right? Because we have another amazing guest with us tonight. Hey, listen, we're going to be talking with Miss Dom Briscoe. Well, we call her Dom, but her name is Dominique Briscoe. And we're going to be talking about saved, single, and same-sex attraction. So join us, why don't you? But in order to give our minds time to kind of get ready for the conversation and to let everyone log on, I'm going to jump into the word of God. We're going to read Proverbs 16. So if you have opportunity, grab your Bible. If not, as I always say, crank up the sound and we're going to just read it to you. Now, listen, kind of like last week, um, we're going to be talking about some sensitive information. Um, It's not necessarily real sensitive, not like last week. However, It may not be information that you're ready for your young ones to be exposed to as of yet. So what we want you to do is to just be aware, plug in PBS Kids or something like that, and then join us for our conversation. All right, let's get right to it. Let's go to the word of God. Go to Proverbs 16. Now I'm building sort of a launching pad for our conversation tonight. However, what we want to do is focus on a few things out of this passage, out of this book but I am going to try to read the whole thing. I've been thinking about it. I think I'll read the whole thing. Let's go. Proverbs 16, verse one. It says, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight. So mark that one. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Verse four, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Verse five, everyone, come on, say it with me. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Mark that one. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. Verse six, by loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great income with injustice. Verse nine, the mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. A divine decision is in the lips of the king. His mouth should not err in judgment. A just balance and scales belong to the Lord. Mark that one. A just balance and scales belong to the Lord. All the weights of the bag are his concern. It is an abomination for kings to commit wicked acts, for a throne is established on righteousness. Verse 13. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and he who speaks right is loved. The fury of a king is like messengers of death, but a wise man will appease it. And the light of a king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud with the spring rain. And much better it is to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen above silver. Verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who watches his way preserves his life. Verse 18, and this is the one we really want to mark. Verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Verse 19, it is better to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who gives attention to the word will find good and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart will be called understanding and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Verse 22, understanding is a fountain of life to one who has it, but the discipline of fools is folly. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Verse 24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. 25, this is another one we want to mark. There is a way 
which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. A worker's appetite works for him, for his hunger urges him on. A worthless man digs up evil, while his words are like scorching fire. A perverse man spreads strife, and a slanderous slanderer separates intimate friends. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. He who winks his eye does so to devise perverse things. He who compresses his lips brings evil to pass. A gray head is a crown of glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city. Last verse, verse 33. The lot is cast into the lap, but it is every decision. It's every decision is from the Lord. Now, just a couple that I wanted us to just kind of pay attention to tonight is we verse two, verse five. Verse 11, verse 18, and verse 25. Especially, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Now, before I bring my guest on, I would just like to encourage each and every one of us to enter into this conversation without a, a, a heart of pride. I think that uh, oftentimes when I've counseled people and I've spoken with people, it's very easy for us sometimes, maybe not you, but maybe me and others like me, it's very easy for us to say, well, okay, so I don't smoke, I don't chew, and I don't run with those who do. So I'm not as bad as so-and-so. We may very well say, um, I don't run down to Wells Fargo and steal from them. I'm not holding up Wells Fargo, but yet we lie and cheat on our taxes. We steal from the government. We steal from our jobs. All those pens and papers and folders and things that don't belong to us, they belong to the job. What I'm saying is there are times in our lives where we can rank sin. Oh, my sister, I just want to encourage you that the cross took care of it all. At the foot of the cross, the blood ran down for all. So I'm, I'm praying that we all can enter this conversation tonight with the understanding that all sin is egregious to our great God, right? Can we just use that as our foundation as we jump in tonight? Now, let me introduce you to somebody. She is a joy to my heart. I'm so glad the Lord has sent her to our church. Her name is Dominique Briscoe. Come on in the room, girl. Hello. Hello, and welcome to Real Life Conversations. I'm excited for our conversation tonight. I'm excited for these ladies to get to know you. First, can you just tell them a little bit about yourself? Okay, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a big fan of the show. I watch it every week. <laughs> um, I'm a member of Community of Faith Bible Church. I serve on the social media ministry and also in the visual ministry. And um, I've been saved for eight years now. Wow. So, yeah, that's pretty much me. I love everything tech. I love everything about serving the Lord. All right. And you are single. I am single. Yes. You are single. Now, listen, before we get too far down the road, ladies, let me say this. You can jump in with your comments. You can jump in with your questions and your thoughts. I'm going to ask you to be respectful and friendly as you do, but jump right on in there. We will answer questions as we can as we go along. And I want to say... All of the real life conversations over the next few weeks, as well as the one from last week, are building up to our singles conference. Yes, join us on June 26th. As a matter of fact, Ms. Dominique Briscoe is gonna be doing one of the breakout sessions, right? That's a plug, that's a plug, yes. That's a plug, <laughs> that is almost not shameless plug. <laughs> we'll put the link on here for you so that you can register, register, register for the conference. Now, back to our conversation for tonight. So our topic tonight is single, saved, and same-sex attraction. Now, why don't you take a moment and take us back in time, take us through your testimony, and tell us a little bit about your life. Yes, yeah, so um, pretty much growing up, um, I was a church kid, grew up in the church. Um, between my mom and my dad, they were heavily involved. So I would like to say like we were in church almost every day out of the week. Um, so just grew up with a foundational knowledge of 
scripture <laughs> understanding of God and um, went to VBS Sunday school, all that kind of stuff. Um, at around the age of 10, I was actually going to a church camp. And this was a combination of all the churches in the city where I grew up in. And we were just going to this normal church camp. And um, I remember them calling up my age group to go and uh, to go to our class. And I see this girl. And when I see her, I immediately feel like this attraction to her. And the best way I can describe it, um, just going back and thinking about it, was um, I, I watched Disney Channel growing up. So the same way like the boy would look at a girl and feel that like the butterflies and stuff like yeah. that. That was the exact same feeling that I had. And the minute that I had it, it felt natural, but at the same time in growing up in church and knowing right from wrong at the time, um, it felt like, okay, no, I'm not supposed to have this, but at the same time, it feels very natural. Mm -hmm. uh, during that week in that camp, we were studying uh, Matthew six about learning how to pray. Okay. And I knew it was wrong. So I would go home and like pray and say like, God, please take this away from me. And um, went home every single day, but the feeling just really just didn't go away. And um, after that whole week of camp was over with, I went on, never really fully had the same like strong attraction again, but still kind of had it. Um, the feelings didn't like come up again, as strong again until I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. And when I was a junior in high school, I could say that between like all the things of being a teenager and just, um, I started to rebel a little bit and started to really just doubt a lot of what I was learning about God. And as soon as I started to do the doubting and the rebellion, mm -hmm. the feeling started coming up again. Okay. And um, it started to come up again. And I, um, I was feeling it out, not really knowing if this is what I wanted to be because it still wasn't as accepted. Yeah. Um, but I kept dabbling with it. And then um, that was my junior year. So by the time I graduated, I went off to Houston to go to school. And now that I'm in Houston, I'm in a big city. There are uh, there's gay bars, there's gay clubs. They are all this kind of stuff that I'm exposed to. And then even being on a college campus, there are clubs that even accept you for who you are. So it's like, now I'm free to just do whatever I want to do. Wow. And um, I started living the lifestyle, I had um, lots of friends who live the lifestyle. And um, it took me getting into my first serious uh, relationship and then having my first serious breakup. Um, for me to start having God coming back in the forefront of my mind. Mm -hmm. At this time, I still was doubting. And um, it was during the time that I had the breakup that uh, my best friend or my college roommate kept telling me, like, you know, God loves you. God loves you, Dom. Like, you okay. God loves you. And she kept telling me God loves you. But I think that my understanding of love was so, like, messed up to yeah. like, understand, like, no, he doesn't love me because I am I'm this. Like, like I clearly do, am doing something that he hates. So I don't think that he loves me. And um, as I went back to school for my junior year, I'm still like dabbling into the into the, like the whole homosexual scene and all that kind of stuff. But uh, one of the girls that I was actually talking to started um, sending me the verses of the day in the Bible. And I'm reading them, but I'm kind of like, some days I'm like, oh, this is really good. And then some days I'm like, okay, but God doesn't like me. Yeah. And uh, it was just during that time, during the first semester of my junior year, where God was like really just pushing me through scripture. And I'm like, but you don't like me. Wow. And um, I started doing everything right per se, but I said, I'm going to give my life to Christ, but I just know that this thing is just not going to go away. In that, um, I actually signed up to get baptized through my ministry on campus. And by God's grace and mercy, the night before I got baptized, I'm driving down 45, and you know, I drive to no music. I like to drive in silence. Okay. God is like talking to me, like, um, basically, like, the still voice that I heard was, 
you need to come to me. You need wow. to let everything down, come to me. And I'm like, turning the music up in my car. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. And I hurry up and go home and I'm waiting for my roommate to be up so I can just talk to her. Her door is closed, the light is off and she sleeps. So I'm like, okay, God. Of all books of the Bible, I open my Bible and I start reading the book of Romans. Wow. And, um, go through Romans one, I'm reading about what he's saying about um, homosexuality and all this kind of stuff. So I'm reading it, but I'm like, mm, I hear you, but, and I keep going and I go all the way down to Romans 14, 23. And in the translation that I read, um, the verse says, but if you have doubts about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning if you go ahead and do it, for you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. And in that moment, wow, what I started to realize was that um, all, all around it wasn't just homosexuality. It was just like, no, you are a sinner and you need God. Yes. So no matter what you try to do to make it perfect, um, you are a sinner and you need to repent. And I didn't really understand repentance. I didn't understand sanctification, all these yeah. big words at the time. All I, all I said, and you know how I, I can be sometimes, I was just like, all right, God, you got it. That's all I said. And to me, that was my form of surrender and saying like, mm -hmm. I am a sinner and I need your grace and your mercy. And that was eight years ago. And that's why wow. I got the grace. Wow. Talk to me a little bit about that grace and mercy. What does that feel like for you from God? What it feels like um, is very freeing. Yeah. Because um, I think in the way that I learned love was that love was very conditional. Mm. And that anytime I messed up, I was worthy of condemnation. I'm worthy of just being cast away. Yeah. And to understand that even though I was messing up, even though I'm like literally rejecting, turning up music against him, he still um, just wants a relationship with me and wants me to come to him. So grace and mercy was very freeing for me. Yeah. So you turn your life over to Christ. You accept him as your savior. Did it all go away? No. <laughs> so I think in the, I thought that the moment that I give my life to Christ that, okay, everything's going to be good. I even told my roommate the day after I got saved or the day after I got baptized and I saved, um, I said, I'm going to put this off to the side. Like I'm not talking to any more girls anymore. Like we're not, I'm not doing it. I think that lasted about a week. Um, I think I did about, for the first two years of me being saved, I was in a bigger church. Yeah. So I was able to go and kind of come out without really having anybody intentional in my life to tell me like, you need to uh, do this, do this, do this. Or just to just walk me through. Yeah. Crap. yeah. And um, it wasn't until 2015, um, so two years later, um, I get injured during, I, I ran track in college. I get injured and I was too late to go to my church's Bible study. Wow. And I ended up going to FCA, which is a ministry on campus at U of A. Is that uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Yes. Okay. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Mm -hmm. And um, that day I walk in, immediately feel warm, immediately feel welcome. And, um, Two months later, just because of consistent going and just the way that my life was showing, um, the lady who was over it, her name is Jordan, she asked me to be a leader in FCA. And part of being a leader, you had to give your testimony of how you come, came to Christ. So like I wrote, I wrote out everything, but I'm like, maybe I should talk to her about this. So we do, <laughs> yeah. we do this long walk on the track and I'm just spilling out my entire life. And uh, from there, she really took me in. And um, we actually, the first one of the first books that we went through was actually Coming to Know and Walk with God, which is now by my now pastor, uh, Nicholas Ellen. And um, when I started to understand a little bit more about God and what love is, when I started to understand more about 
um, what it means. We also read Attitudes of a Transformed Heart by Martha mm -hmm. Peters. Yes. I'm learning put off, put on. I'm learning like, um, just learning how to retrain my mind towards how to relate to other people, how to serve God, what sanctification looks like. And um, it took just that real intentional time with her and in ministry and actually serving in my church and being around community. Yeah. To actually understand uh, how to actually walk this out. Like, and even if I had the feeling, understanding like you have to um, not necessarily suppress it, but you are your body or the way that you live is not for you anymore. Yeah. You have to live for Christ. And so um, having scripture embedded in the back of my head, um, just to know like no temptation is overtaking you. That's not common. Yes. It's not as faithful. Yes. Like those kind of stuff had to be trained really hard into my head to be able to kind of just walk through any temptation that I would have. Wow, that is some good stuff. Hey, ladies, if you're just joining us, this is Real Life. I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen, and I'm having a wonderful conversation with Miss Dominique Briscoe. We're talking about Save, Single, and Same-Sex Attracted. That book she mentioned, Coming in on Walk by God, is written by my husband, Dr. Nicholas Ellen. You can get it on Amazon, or you can get it on our website at mycounselingcorner.com. It's Coming to Know and Walk with God. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Coming to Know and Walk with God. Um, what would you say that you still had your fears and concerns with after all of that putting on and putting off and meditating and memorizing scripture? What do you think are some of the things that you still had concerns about? Um, I still, one of the biggest things that I think that I had concerns with was um, really just taking my life and giving it to someone that I honestly didn't know. <laughs> and um, and then also it's just like, I'm coming from somebody who loves women. And so now you're telling me to trust this man. And I'm like, I don't know him. I can't yeah. put my life and put my faith and my trust in him. I'm also, um, you're telling me to join church and be around church-minded people, but I mean, people who are in the church. Yeah, These are the same people who talk down upon me sometimes. So yeah. I don't really want to hang with that. And so it's hard because there's a life that I knew that I was comfortable in and yeah. that I didn't feel shame in, but there was also a God that is claiming to be, at the time, claiming to be a lot better and, uh, more fulfilling than everything that I can ever want. But um, I think that was just the hard part is just grasping more of who God was. And I think that's what the book really just helped me to understand a little bit more about who he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the church because I think that is an important aspect of this. I don't know if you remember, but I remember when you shared your testimony with me, you came to my office and you shared your testimony. And I said, oh, okay. And you were just kind of like, <laughs> that's it. I'm like, okay. You actually said right. I already kind of knew. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, so what are we going to do from here? Let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about church. And, and, and you mentioned that there can be some angst with relating with us as church members, because sometimes the way we approach this, here's what I usually say when I go out and I speak about these issues. And I want to bring up a couple of scriptures. Um, I want to go to Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. I always tell people that sometimes we lose the opportunity to love on someone struggling with something. It can be alcoholism. It can be whatever it is. We can lose the opportunity by walking from a heart of pride and arrogance and tending to look down our nose at others. You know what I mean? There are times mm -hmm. when we can come across as if a particular sin is a scarlet letter. Let me, let me say it this way. We can be in the church, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost for all these years. We've been doing all of this. Now, right, we've forgotten where we've come from. You know, the word says, so were some of you. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten that, you know, we needed to be sanctified. God had to work on us. And then we see a young lady come through the church unmarried and she's six months pregnant. The temptation could be to really, really deal with her harshly. 
instead of love her into the loving arms of God. I think sometimes we approach it that way with same sex attraction and we don't we don't show the love of God in that instance. Here's the scripture. It says a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness. Well, we have to back up. Wait, let me get my Bible because we have to back up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, ladies. Grab your Bible. Proverbs six. We have to back up just a tinky winky bit. Yeah. Okay, let's go to 6 and 16. Here is what it says. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes. Seven which are an abomination to him. Okay. Now, let me give you some context because this is sometimes when I'm talking with people and I'm counseling people, they will say to me, well, same sex attraction is an abomination to the Lord. And I say, you know what you show right about it. But can I show you something else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Seven, which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies and one who spreads strife among brothers. There are so many things that the Bible says are an abomination to God. Differing weights and measures, evil plans, lying lips, those who are devious, those who justify the wicked and condemn the righteous, a false balance of scales and a perverse heart. So now let's talk. You see what I'm saying? Oftentimes I say the blood ran down for all of us. We're not condoning any of this. But at the same time, do we have the right to be self-righteous about it and treat someone where they can't walk into the loving arms of God? So I say all that to go back to saying you said there's a possibility that you felt a little different way about trying to relate with, quote unquote, church people. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Um, yeah, I think that first starting out, too, um, especially in those first two years, um, trying to get around church people. There were, um, I'm not going to say a lot that happened, but there were just a lot of just wrong things that people said. Um, I remember one time I'm like trying to serve and this lady asked me, um, Dom, you've been coming to this church all this time. Do you want to get married? Um, are you trying to get married? Because, you know, once you 20, once you graduate college, it's like the world standards is you need to get married tomorrow. Well, she was like, do you want to get married? And I was like, not really. Um, I said, if that's something that God wants, um, I will. But if not, um, it's OK. And she goes, well, what what, what are you? What, you're a lesbian or something? And like she jokingly said it, but it was just like, that's what I'm struggling with. And now you're telling me, like, I'm trying to walk in righteousness. And that's the first thing that you bring up. And so um, I think that there are a lot of wrong things that people say, but um, I think that as somebody who struggles, um, the first thing that you should really do is just kind of like start discerning who is able to walk you through and who is able yeah. to um, mentor you. I remember when I did come to you that one time, um, I was just like, you know what, I'm tired of struggling with this. Yeah. And at that time, Jordan had uh, moved to Austin. And so I didn't have the same accountability. And I said, somebody has to know. Yeah. And so I remember bringing it to you. And then eventually I started bringing it out. Well, not eventually. We'll explain that later. But uh, I had to bring it out to the church. And um, I just, I can kind of encourage people just to say like, uh, the way that my church kind of accepted me, I hate for the narrative to be that all churches don't accept people who struggle with yeah. same-sex attraction because the way that they accepted me was overwhelmingly full of love. Um, just hugging and like, you'll be okay and checking it. Like even now, before this whole live came on, like, hey sis, we're praying for you. I'm gonna be here for you. You need anything, are you okay? And yeah. thing like that, like you can't allow the church narrative to get in the way of like God's church. Is gonna do. I mean, God's church is not perfect, but um, there are churches out there that are loving and can 
be who, uh, what the church called it to be. Yeah, yeah, and I believe that you can love someone into sanctification, walk with them through their sanctification without condoning the sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that we condone any of the sins. Like we don't condone fornication or adultery or whatever it may be. But at the same time, I think we can be a listening ear. We can be an encouragement. We can be a sister Mm -hmm. to them, no matter what it is. I know that I still struggle with various different things. I need people just like somebody else needs people. I need sisters to come along and encourage me. Why do we have to decide that if it's a particular sin, I'm not going to encourage you in that? I'm not going to tell. I I think we can swing on two pendulums. We can not speak truth of it, right? Mm -hmm. We can try to be so encouraging that we don't say what God said. And we need to say what he said Mm -hmm. and say it. But I think it's the scripture that says you got to say it with love. So I'm so grateful that you were loved on by our sisters in church and that they spoke truth to you, but they did it in love. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how do you how would you speak to someone that may be struggling with same sex attraction and and they don't know where to go? Maybe they don't have this church environment. Maybe they don't have a Jordan. They don't have somebody to speak truth and help them to be set free. What would you say to them? First thing I would say for sure is um, if you're a believer, that first thing is just prayer. Um, I know a lot of people, um, I I know for sure I was blessed to just be able to have just the different people who came into my life. And um, especially as an introvert, like I wouldn't, I don't think I would have gone out and just necessarily reached out to those people. But I think that, First, pray and ask God to show you um, when you understand what a church is, when you understand what um, the community and what the body should look like. You pray for that. You ask for that. Um, You look around for um, when I was doing a church, looking for a church, you look through their doctrinal statements and things like that. You start looking for those type of things first. And then um, in prayer, too also be looking for um, just people, people to mentor you, people to guide you. And um, really just until you get to that point, I think one of the things too is to hide, like to keep scriptures ri- written on your heart because your flesh, like trying to work this out in your flesh is not gonna work at all. You have to have something that is greater in you that is working through you. And uh, you have to have something that the minute that you are tempted, you have to have something that's coming to your head. And it's like you said one time, like you can't try to put it in in that moment. Yeah. Start putting it in and put it into practice way before the the opportunity even arises. So that the minute that um, I'm using an example that happened to me actually recently, uh, the minute that you see something that you would be tempted by, you hear flee. Like you run the complete opposite way and um, just have the scriptures just written on your heart so that you're able to walk out the way that God has called you to walk. Yeah. Amen. I agree to that so much. Ladies, listen, as we're wrapping this up, because we're coming to a close, if you have thoughts or questions or, hey, if you just want to high five Dom, just high five her. (laughs) Just come on, just say high five in the comments because it took a lot of courage. Listen, it took a lot of courage to come and say this and encourage. And the reason that we're doing this, because I know there are, there are many young ladies who may be struggling with this, but they have no one to talk to, or they haven't taken the opportunity to really step way out there on that ledge and say, hey, yeah, that's me, that's me. Take a moment, Dom, if you will, and just speak to that woman right now that's still struggling with that, but she just feels like she has nowhere to turn. Yeah. Um, first, like, even in saying that, like I know that um, a lot of people uh, are looking for somebody and need somebody and they might not necessarily have um, a family or a body of believers or anything like that. And um, I'll just say like right here, right now, since I have the platform, um, I think my Facebook is tagged, my 
Instagram might be tagged on here, like DM me. Like I, I really like helping people and helping them get into a church and because people did it for me. Yeah. And so um, for sure, uh, that's the first thing I would say is just, if you need somebody to talk to, if you are encouraged, uh, feel free to talk to me. I'm introverted, but I don't bite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other thing, uh, I would give the encouragement of just the gospel. Yeah. And um, I would give the encouragement of the gospel in the sense of not necessarily how a lot of people say, like, you know, Jesus uh, died on the cross for your sins, so you need to live for him. But to me, that's just so, it's, it's too much of, that, of what God did that's put in a box. And it's really a bigger picture of, like, God, uh, I think of Romans, because I read the whole book of Romans right before I got saved. And um, in Romans 1, he talks about how uh, his invisible attributes are known. And you see the world, you see how beautiful the sky is, you see how beautiful yes. you are, you see all of this kind of stuff. And um, you have to know that there's a God out there. Mm. And God, who is infinite, who is Lord, who is um, just the creator of all things, creates this beautiful world and then also creates people. Yeah. And in creating people, he says, I want relationship with you. Like yeah. literally the God who creates all of this wants relationship with you. Anybody, mm. anybody that's struggling or something like that, he wants relationship with you. But we, because of Adam and Eve and the sin that they did in the garden are now cursed to have sin that enters into our body. And because of sin, our bodies um, have, because of sin, the wages of sin is death. Yeah. And so, um, because we sin and because there is death, um, there is eternal separation from him. But God so lovingly said like, hey, even though um, you're eternally separated away from me, I'm gonna make a way for you to even come mm -hmm. back to me and have relationship with me. Amen. And so what it is, is he comes in the form of a man, of Jesus Christ, and he comes in the form of man, but he's 100% man and 100% God, tempted in the same way that we are tempted. So like to know that even we have Jesus Christ who lived the same kind of life we did, like has the same fingers, he has hair, he has all this kind of stuff just like we had. And he lives the life that we were supposed to live, but then dies the death that we deserved. Yeah, yeah, come on. When he dies, mm. he uh, takes on the whole weight of sin. Mm. So he dies, but I think that's the part that really like resonated with me is that three days later he conquers what sin did which is death come on he conquers death and rises from the grave mm. and when he rises from the grave he goes and shows and tells his disciples that um i have to go away now because i have to send a comforter with you because he knows because he's walked this walk he knows that there's going to be temptations and everything like that and for the person that's afraid to put their trust in jesus christ he sends the Holy Spirit down so that you have a comforter. You have somebody to walk with you. You have somebody that says, like, you know, when you're going through this same kind of temptation, like, I'm with you. I'm pushing you to your scripture. The yeah. scripture written on your heart, that's me pushing you to say, like, hey, you can do this. You can conquer yeah. this. And yeah. anytime you're tempted, and it's not just same-sex attraction, it's if you're a liar, all these abominations that you said at the beginning, that's, that's it. what the Holy Spirit is there for. And all you have to do is not this big production or show or anything like that. Like I said, I said, all right, Lord, you got it. But all you're doing is putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. That's it. Your sins are covered. And anytime you are sinning, you are all you do is ask for God to repent and he covers you and sees you as righteous so that you can have relationship with him eternally. Cause it's not just about it. I mean, you have a short life here, but hmm. you have eternity with him. It's so much more than this girl that you like, or um, this sin, like stop making the sin such a big thing. Yeah. There's so much more to live for. And God wants you to just have relationship with him and to have access so that you can just walk through and be with him forever. Because that, 
is the ultimate relationship. Yeah. And so um, my encouragement is just, just put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ because um, nothing that you can do in your flesh mm. will be able to, um, to satisfy you, really. Nothing, nothing. Saints, I hope you're praying. I hope you're praying because I hope this word, this truth goes out to everyone. And it's not just about same sex attraction. I hope that what we have conveyed here is that all sin is an abomination to God, that no matter what it is, we need to walk rightly before him. And if you don't know him, Dom just laid it out for you. And listen, you don't need to wait till Sunday. You can stop right now. Saints, I hope you're praying. Ladies, you can stop right now and just ask the Lord of Lords and the host of hosts to come into your life, to save you, to deliver you from whatever it is that has you bound and set you free and to, to have a life and a relationship with him that, as they say, is sweeter and sweeter and gooder and gooder. So just take a moment if that's you. If you do not have a church home, we offer you Community of Faith Bible Church. That's Community of Faith Bible Church, where our pastor is Pastor uh, Nicholas Ellen. You can find us at cofbc.org. That's cofbc.org. And listen, ladies, if you really are dealing with same-sex attraction and you want to be ministered to, Dom, I'm about to throw you out here. Hold on. You, you want to go to a church that's going to love on you, as she said. Listen, my ladies in my church, I, I just got to say they are awesome, right? They love the Lord and they are looking to walk with you just like somebody walked with them with whatever their sin was. Come to Community of Faith. Right now we're meeting online on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., but that will stop shortly. We will be going back into person very soon. But for now, join us 10 a.m. Sunday mornings at COFBC.org. Now, don't forget. If you are liking this content, come on, do it with me. Smash, 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 smash the like button. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Subscribe so that we can continue this type of content. And no matter what, put your faith and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Now, Dom, before we close, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no closing thoughts. I'm just going to just reiterate what I said. Like you said, uh, join a church join um put your faith in christ and um i'm here to walk with you uh i can't throw you under the bus but i'll just throw myself under but i'm here to walk with you i'm here i'm here <laughs> if you need to uh, but that's that's pretty much it it's just to put your faith in us in jesus christ because um that's the only way that you walk this out um you just are able to walk this out yeah yeah. Amen. Now, what did we say? Let's close with just a recap of what we said and what we didn't say. What did we say? We said that God is a righteous God. He is a holy God. He does have a standard for all sin. Right. When yes. we get saved, we are saved from something unto something. We are saved from sin unto a right relationship with him. So this is not a come as you are, stay as you are. This is come as you are. We're going to love you and we're going to help you to be what God would have you to be so that no one takes away from this that we said, oh, it's OK. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we all struggle with something. We all have some sin that does easily beset us. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. We all are dealing with something. If you're looking for a place to walk it out, find a good Bible teaching church. OK. Now, the other thing that we did say is that there are times in this life where people will not be as kind because of your particular kind of sin. But know this, God loves you, right? God loves you. And Dominique Briscoe is an example, a great example that not every Christian is going to treat you poorly. Not every Christian is going to condemn you. There will be some Christians that will walk with you hold your hand, encourage you, and not treat you like you have the scarlet letter. Amen? Amen. I'm going to close with the singles conference. Don't forget, <laughs> June 26th, June 26th, yes. you can sign up on our website, cofbc.org, but also we're going to drop the link in here in this video for you. Hey, it's been great. Another amazing guest. Come on. Round of applause, virtual applause for Dominique Briscoe. <laughs> You did that, girl. 
Praise the Lord. Ladies, I'm Dr. Vanessa Ellen. This was Real Life Conversations. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Remember, all these weeks are leading up to the conference. Every week is a single showdown, right? That's what we're going to call it, a single showdown. Join us, single ladies. We'll see you back next week, Thursday. Who's our guest? I can't remember. We'll link it, and we'll tell you who our guest is and what our topic is coming up. See you soon. Bye.